There are a lot of different display types or components that you can use in your favorite screens. Let's look at each of those components starting with the gauge, similar to the gauges on your automobile. At the top is the title of the component. This is set up when your favorite screen is created and should tell you what the gauge is monitoring. At the bottom right you can see the units of the value that is being displayed. Again the units are selected when the favorite screen is created, tailoring the display to your vessel. The value itself is displayed by both a needle and a small digital display. If you look just below the digital display, you will also see a little LED, which will always match the color of the band that the needle is pointing to. You no longer need to remember that 40 is a good value and 70 is bad. If the LED turns red or the needle is pointing at a red band, then you know that something is wrong. This makes it very easy to have someone less experienced monitoring these values. They just need to watch that nothing goes red. If no data is present on the network for this component, the needle will be shown against the left end stop and the digital display shows a dash. Gauges and some of the other components can also be set up to keep track of minimum and maximum values. These are always shown as red and blue triangle markers that are pushed by the needle. The blue marker tracks the minimum value while the red marker tracks the maximum value. Controls can be configured to have no markers, just one marker, or both the minimum and maximum marker. Associated with the markers is a reset button in the bottom left of the component. Pressing this button will move the markers to the current needle position. The next component is the digital display. This also has the title at the top and the units at the bottom right. The monitored value is displayed as a digital value only and once again you can see the LED which will turn red to indicate an error condition or yellow for a warning. When the component is created in the favorite screen you can customize the values at which the LED turns red, green, and yellow so you are in total control of what is going to show up as an error or a warning. If no data is present on the network for this component the digital display shows a dash. On some digital displays such as the trip log a reset button will be shown at the bottom left. Pressing this button will send a command to the device which will reset the value being monitored. Digital displays can be used to display latitude and longitude. Here the LED has no meaning so it is not displayed. The units field at the bottom right is extended to show the quality of the GPS fix. This example shows a 3D differential GPS fix. If the digital display is used to show a compass bearing such as heading, the units field will show whether the bearing is relative to true or magnetic north. For dates, the units field shows the time zone reference of the date and the format in which the date is displayed. For times, it shows the time zone reference and for 12 hour display, whether it is AM or PM. Times can also be displayed using an analog clock. Again, the units field shows the time zone reference and whether it is AM or PM. A bar graph can also be used to represent a value. The title has been moved to the left of the component and the units are in their normal place at the bottom right. The gauge component has a needle that points to different color bands. The digital display has an LED that changes color. In the bar graph, the color of the bar will change to show error and warning conditions. The values at which the color changes take place are user configurable and set up when the favorite screen is created. In this example, the left bar graph has been set up without color banding and will always be gray and the right component has color banding showing yellow. If no data is present on the network for this component, no bar is shown. Bar graphs can be set up to keep track of the minimum and maximum values reported through the component. These are always shown as red and blue triangle markers on the right of the bars. The blue marker tracks the minimum value while the red marker tracks the maximum value. Bar graphs can be configured to have no markers, just one marker, or both the minimum and maximum marker. Associated with the markers is a reset button in the bottom left of the component. Pressing this button will move the markers to the current needle position. A special case of the bar graph is the tank component. Again, the color of the bar shows the color banding, the title is back at the top of the component, and the units at the bottom right. A digital display of the value is displayed below the tank graphic. Tanks can also be created with minimum and maximum markers. All the components that we have looked at so far have been displaying the values in real time. 
The next component gives us the ability to see what the value has been doing over time. This is the graph component. It's really great for watching the barometer rise and fall, but you can use it to track just about any parameter you care to monitor over time to determine trends and changes. Again, the title is on the top and the units at the bottom right. The most recent value is always at the right of the graph and time goes backwards to the left. The period between the left and right edges of the graph is displayed under the graph and this can be changed by pressing the up and down arrows on either side of it. Pressing the up button will increase the period to a maximum of four days. Pressing the down button will decrease the period to a minimum of one minute. The entire contents of the graph may be slid up and down by dragging the numeric values of the y-axis up or down. Taking a close look at the values on the graph, you can see that on graphs with a period of 30 minutes or more, the values are displayed as a red line on top of a thicker gray area. The red line shows the average of the values at that time. The gray shows the range of values that were recorded. Moving the cursor over the graph will show the numeric values for minimum, average, and maximum with the time they were recorded. A special version of the line graph is the depth graph. The zero value is at the top of the graph and the area below the depth reported is shaded as solid brown. Another interesting component is the moon phase. This will calculate the phase of the moon from the date and display it, both as a picture and textually in the units field. While on the subject of weather or environment, one of the most important things we want to display is what the wind is doing. If we just want to display one of the wind's parameters, such as speed or direction, then a digital display is a good option. But wind is more complex than that. The direction of the ground wind can be displayed on a north-up compass rose, and the true or apparent wind can be displayed on a wind angle component. This shows the direction of the wind relative to the bow. The speed of the wind is shown in a small digital display embedded into the component. For sailors who need more detail on winds coming off the bow, there is a wind close angle component as well which shows only 75 degrees to port and starboard. If no data is present on the network for this component, the needle will be dimmed and the digital display shows a dash. All the wind components can have minimum and maximum markers added. Again, there is a reset button to bring the markers to the current needle position. Other components include the head up rows and the north up rows, which can be used to display values like bearing to waypoint, course over ground, or ground wind direction. And there is the GPS status component, which is a composite component showing all the values reported by the GPS receiver. The heading of the GPS status control is extended with the quality of the GPS fix. You can see the number of satellites being tracked with the signal strength from each satellite. If the satellite is supplying SBAS data, it is colored red. The GPS supplied date and time is shown, and most important, the accuracy of the position fix tells you what your position error is. Another interesting component gives the ability to view the vessel's roll and pitch. This can be done on digital displays or in the combined attitude component which combines the two values into a single graphical display. There is also an inclinometer for roll which may be configured to have minimum and maximum marks. The rudder angle order component displays two different values at the same time. The red needle shows the angle at which the rudder is pointing, the rudder angle, and the small gray triangle shows the direction in which the autopilot has requested the rudder to point, the rudder order. If this value is not supplied on the bus, the gray triangle will be dimmed. Minimum and maximum marks may be added to the rudder angle order component. Of particular interest when you are anchored is the anchor watch component. For this to work, you will require the optional alerts module to be licensed or you will see the words not licensed. The anchor watch component starts off as an empty circle with a set button in the bottom left corner. Set the anchor watch as soon as the anchor is dropped by pressing the set button. This marks the anchor position which will always be in the center of the circle. As your vessel drifts away from the anchor position, your vessel's position will be indicated on the component with a symbol. This will be a circle if the vessel's heading is not known. If your vessel moves outside the anchor watch radius, the circle on the component will turn red and the vessel symbol replaced with an arrow just outside the circumference. This will also trigger an alarm because you are probably dragging your anchor. When you press the set button, the name of the button changed to clear. When you raise the anchor, 
Press the clear button to prevent the alarm from going off as you move out of the circle. When it comes to security, there is no component more assuring than live video. N2K View will connect directly to Axis network cameras and display the video integrated with your other data on one screen. If the camera supports PTZ, that is, pan, tilt, and zoom, buttons may be displayed below the video to control the camera. The plus and minus buttons will zoom the picture in and out while the arrow buttons change the direction in which the camera is pointing. An alternative video component omits the frame and overlays the PTZ controls and the title over the picture for a cleaner view. For details on the component types for indicators, switches, and composite components, please watch the second video in this series. Thanks for watching this video. Please visit our website at www.mirtron.com to learn more.